This video has some of the most important things you can learn getting started with Godot and any engine. I'll explain you what you can find in the class reference and how it will help you accelerate your learning. Then I will show you how to make an excellent help request if you're ever stuck with a difficult problem and you need the community to help you. This will maximize your chances of getting an answer. Godot is a feature-packed game engine. It literally has thousands of functions and tons of features for you to learn. You won't find a tutorial for every single thing you want to do. To learn fast, programmers use the code reference that's luckily built into the editor and available offline in Godot, making it super convenient to use. Let's see what the class reference contains and how to use it. If you're entirely new to coding, you may not understand everything I'm going to say, but I invite you to still watch the video because it will serve you in the future and we'll talk about other things too. You can also watch it again anytime in the future, really. The reference covers Godot's scripting API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. These are all the functions, properties, and kinds of nodes you can use while coding in Godot. You can start an interactive search by pressing Shift F1, as we saw. In this window, you can already browse the available node types and see which types they inherit. Functions and variables will only appear if you start typing a query, as otherwise there would be an overwhelming amount of entries. Let's look for Node2D. I type it in the bar and I see three classes in gray and Node2D selected. This tells me that Node2D extends canvas item, node, and object, and so it has access to all the functions and features of those three types. If I press enter, this opens the reference page for Node2D. You can see the class name and inheritance hierarchy at the top like we just saw in the search tool. Again, we see that Node2D extends from canvas item, etc. You can click those links to jump to the corresponding pages. You will then find a summary of the class's role and sometimes some more specific use cases. As you scroll down, you will find the class's properties, functions, called methods here, signals, enumerations, and constants. These tell you all the scripting features that are available to you with this class. For example, our Node2D has a position, a rotation, and a scale that you can use to move, rotate, and scale it respectively. These are three properties. As all 2D game nodes inherit from Node2D, we can use those properties on any of them. Note that I'm not saying this is how you should move things if you want a character to collide with walls, for example. There are specialized nodes like the Kinematic Body 2D for that. We will see that later in this video series. Note that you can click any underlying text to jump to its description or the corresponding page. This reference is a network of pages that you browse as you need information. For example, next to the position, to the left, I see the word Vector2. It's the type of this property, meaning that the position is a vector2. I can click on it to jump to the reference page for the vector2 type and see that it has two properties, x and y. In the left column of the script view, I can see the open docs pages, along with if you have any open scripts, and click on Node2D to jump back to its page. If we scroll down a bit, down to the methods, they also have a word in blue on the left column. For example, void next to apply scale. This is the return type or the value that the method returns to you and that you can save in a variable. In this case, something like float means a decimal number, transform2d is an object of type transform2d, and void means this function does not return any value. In practice, it will return the value null. That's it for a quick tour of the reference pages. Now let's talk about making excellent help requests. There are many good communities you can join to share with other users. They're all listed on the official website. There, you can also ask for help if you are really stuck with a problem. The thing is, you might already have asked questions and gotten no answers. If that happened, the problem is that you most likely didn't give enough information for people to help you. If you want people to give up their time to figure out your problem and give you personal support, you need to take a bit of time to explain your problem well and provide them with the context they need. Without that, they can't help you. The first thing you should do is search for existing answers to your questions because there are many available already. The best place to ask for questions and find already answered ones is the official questions and answers site. 
All this content shows up in search engine results and gets saved, allowing other users to benefit from discussions on the platform. Once you ask a question there, you can share its link on social networks, be it Reddit, Discord, you name it. Before you ask a question, be sure to look for an existing answer that might solve your problem, be it on this website or using your preferred search engine. Then it's asking questions well and providing details that will help others answer you faster and better. When asking questions, you should describe your goal. If there's an error involved, you should put the error message. If there's code involved, you should share a code sample. You should also share a screenshot of your scene doc along with your written code. You can also share a video of the gameplay to help troubleshoot it. And lastly, if you're not using the latest stable version of Godot, you should mention the version as well. Okay, let's go back through all of these. First, you should describe your goal. You want to explain what you are trying to achieve design-wise, your expected result in the game. If you're having trouble figuring out how to make your code work, there's likely a different, more straightforward solution that accomplishes the same goal. Then, if there's an error involved, share the exact error message. You can copy it in the editor's debugger bottom panel by clicking the copy error icon. Knowing what the debugger says gives other people some insights into the root cause of your problem. If there's code involved, you need to share a code sample. Other users won't be able to help you fix a problem without seeing your code. Also, be sure to share the code as text directly. To do so, you can copy and paste a short snippet in a chat box or use a website like Pastebin to share long files. You should share a screenshot of your scene doc along with your written code. Most of the code you write affects nodes in your scenes. As a result, you should think of those scenes as part of your source code. Also, please don't take a picture with your phone. The low quality and screen reflections can make it hard to understand the image. Your operating system should have a built-in tool to take screenshots with the print screen key. Sharing a video of your running game can also be really useful to troubleshoot it. You can use a program like OBS Studio and screen to gif to capture your screen. You can then use a service like Streamable or a cloud provider to upload and share your videos for free. If you're not using the stable version of Godot, please mention the version you're using. The answer can be different as available features in the interface evolve rapidly. If you follow these guidelines, you maximize your chances of getting the answers you're looking for. They'll save time both to you and the person's helping you because if you don't provide the info, they'll have to ask you and you'll end up in the longer back and forth conversation. In the next tutorial, you'll get started working with Godot's scenes and nodes. You will create your first scene and run it in the engine. So subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the next videos. To get a selection of our best free tutorials and resources, head to our website and enter your email. You'll get them right in your inbox. The link's in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.